Welcome back everyone. As you'll have seen already, this engine has a coolant seal failure, so it needs to be pulled and rebuilt. So once I got my engine stand ready, I started taking some reference photos and then getting down to stripping as much of the ancillaries away from the engine as possible. Once I'd got as much out of the engine bay as I possibly could to gain some better access, I pulled my engine hoist out of the shed and out came the engine. With the car now looking pretty sorry for itself, I got the engine block into the shed and started the strip down. At this point I'm inspecting everything on and around the engine. There you can see the ACT clutch which had definitely seen better days. But actually this turbo, this uh, TO4S, which was in very good condition and was working perfectly. So I've cleared a space on my workbench and gathered up all of the tools that I thought I might need. The engine's on the stand and ready to start attacking this block. You very quickly end up with quite a pile of parts. Just a few photos of how it looked and what I discovered. Now I'm afraid you'll have to deal with my voiceover because I had music playing in the background and YouTube doesn't like that kind of thing. So this is the rear iron and obviously that is not normal. Um, clearly there's a, a coolant seal uh, issue there. And then you can see all of this moisture that was inside the engine. At this point, I thought perhaps this was coolant, um, wasn't really sure. And then this is one of the three bolts that was between the two spark plugs. And that was quite corroded, which threw me off a bit as well. Didn't really know where that was coming from. So made myself a coffee and uh, had to think about things. There's my coffee. <laughs> and then realized that this engine had been sat outside in the car for quite a while after I'd pulled off the exhaust manifold and the turbo and it's been raining quite a lot over that time so I thought perhaps that it was just rain that had come in through the exhaust ports and this wasn't coolant at all. Now I'm not sure if it was a mixture of both or one or the other but anyway the engine's now apart and I can see that clearly there is a problem there. Now that we've got the engine apart, I thought we'd take a look at the porting. This is the secondary port on the rear iron. And the street port, which this is, involves enlarging the original port and then smoothing out everything inside to uh, create a much smoother transition for more air fuel mixture to enter the engine. It seemed to me that the porting work done to this engine looked pretty good. And I'm just looking at the amount of wear on the face of the iron there. And then moving on to the exhaust port, you can see that the bottom of the port has been squared off and then enlarged and that that transition has been all ported out and smoothed out. And you can also see quite a bit of wear on the housing there. And then over to the, this is the middle iron and these are the primary ports. So that's all been smoothed out in there as well and, uh, and enlarged. And then looking into the port, there you can see it's all been smoothed out in there as well. And it's still got the injector diffuser in there. A bit of bad camera work. But there we are, yeah, that's inside the port. And looking down onto the, this is the front iron now. And you can see that it's all just a bit grotty and grimy though. There's soot everywhere and sludge. And uh, there's quite a bit of wear on the face of that iron. So what I decided I was going to do was to take the irons, the housings and the rotors, along with the rotating assembly, basically the whole engine but broken down, and take that down to Colum at Garage Reg down in Birmingham for him to do some pretty extensive work. I've asked him to do a full bridge port, so that's a bridge on the primary and secondary ports, and lap the irons, resurface the housings, put in new bearings into the stationary gears and the rotors, along with lightening the rotors and clearancing them, 
and then I should have a pretty cool engine. He's also going to balance the rotors and the whole rotating assembly, which lends itself much more to high horsepower, high RPM. Then I'll get it all back and be assembling it myself. Probably going to get some solid dowel pins and some studs as well whilst it's there. And then hopefully I can make this thing sing again and uh, enjoy some of the braps that the full bridge will bring. I know this hasn't been the longest or most exciting video to watch, but thanks very much for sticking around. And there's the engine all broken down on the table, ready to go down to Garage Reg. And uh, I'll be obviously updating this when we get it back and showing you what's been found and what's happened to the engine when I rebuild it. And of course, rebuilding the rest of the car because uh, as always, I got massively carried away and decided to do loads more work than I was going to. So once again, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to look at my Instagram, it's at jack.rx7. Uh, hit the subscribe thing and do all of those YouTube things and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.